Despite being one of the first places we can find in the capital wasteland, Megaton is a pretty interesting place even late into the game with a cast of fascinating characters. One of whom is a young woman named Lucy West. We usually find her hanging out in Moriarty's saloon, putting up with Moriarty's creepy flirting. She likes to sit over at a table by the front door. A traveler, eh? I don't recognize you. New in town or something? Sure am. Stopped in to find something to do. I hope by something to do you mean a job. Otherwise you want to talk with Nova. I'm looking for someone to make a delivery. Interested? Well, I need some details before I can decide. Hey, you're pretty smart for a wastelander. I need you to deliver a message to my family. They live in a small settlement northwest of here. If you bring it, I'm sure my dad will pay you. I'll tell you more if you agree. Please, I could really use your help. A job usually means that I get paid. Actually, I don't have any caps with me. I used everything I had buying a shack in this town. But if you'd be nice enough to help me, I bet my father would pay you something for all the trip. What do you say? Eh, sure, why not? Great. I'd like you to deliver this message to my family in the Arafu settlement. I haven't heard from them in months, and I'm worried. As soon as you get there, talk to Davis West. He'll be glad to pay you for the trip. With that, we begin the quest, Blood Ties. Lucy, can you give me more information about Arafu? Sure. Be glad to, since you're doing me a big favor and all. Where is Arafu? Arafu is northwest of Megaton, on an old overpass over the Potomac. If you follow what's left of the river, you can't miss it. Do you suspect your family's in danger? No, not really. Maybe my letters just aren't arriving. Whatever you can do to get it there would sure be appreciated. Who else lives in Arafu? Well, let's see. There's Evan King. He's like the sheriff of the town or whatever. Then there's my family, the Ewer family. And a lady who lives alone named Karen Shenzi. Is there anything dangerous around there that I should know about? What? Apart from the wasteland critters, slaver raiding parties, raider hit squads, and occasional landmine? <laughs> no, it's completely safe. If this was easy, I'd go myself, you know. All right, I'll be on my way. Hey, thanks again for doing this for me. It means a lot. Arafu. These town names keep getting stranger and stranger. Well, I hadn't explored out that way yet. The closest place I had found was the Jury Street Metro Station. So fast traveling there, we take a stroll north-northeast, fight through a bunch of scorpions and robots, until we see an overpass loom on the road before us. There's a shack to the right, and a traveling merchant to the left. One of the many traveling merchants will appear here each time we visit. Heading over to the shack, we see that it's boarded up, and there's a pen outside with three dead Brahmin. Why are these Brahmin dead? Well, climbing up the overpass to find some answers, we see a big sign. Exit 150A, Arafu. Next exit. Oh, so this is how it got its name. Careful. Next exit. Well, being careful in Arafu, we climb over some board ramps until... Hang on, you're not one of them. I nearly blasted you in two. Get over here before they spot you! This guy threw a grenade at us! Heading on over to figure out what's going on. Now what the hell are you doing all the way out here? Next time you shoot at me like that, you better not miss. Don't play tough with me! I was shooting my gun when you were still an itch in your daddy's pants. Well, I'm just really passing through. Nobody just passes through here. There's nothing to get to by way of this shithole. You found yourself at a dead end. Who did you think I was? I thought you were one of the family. They're some low-life gangers who've been giving us a hell of a lot of trouble lately. They're the reason for my itchy trigger finger. Well, the reason I'm here is I have this letter for the West family. That's great, but I got bigger problems than being the town post office right now. The shit's about to hit the fan in this cesspool, and I don't think I can stop them. Mm, what kind of trouble? Well, at first they do their typical gang bullshit. You know, break stuff and make lots of noise. But they always kept their distance. Are they raiders or slavers? No way. If they were, you'd be staring at a burned out ghost town. I think the family are just a bunch of punks. Well, come on. This is just gang nonsense. That's what I thought at first. 
But this last time, they went too far. They killed all of our Brahmin. I mean, that's our lifeblood out here, you know? Have you ever taken one of them out? Are you out of your mind? I drop one of them, and the rest will use me as a bullet catcher. As soon as they roll into town, I lock my doors just like everyone else. We could really use some assistance here. Why don't you fight back? Yeah, sure. I'll just go and take all of them out by myself. What are you, crazy? What are you, some kind of wimp? Look, pal, if you think I'm going to get my ass shot off playing the hero, you're dead wrong. What is it about this family that has you so spooked? Ah, look, you can call me crazy if you want, but there is something odd about those creeps. I mean, they got the guns and they got the muscle. Why don't they just bust down our doors and take us out already? We're really in a bad way and could use some help. Sounds like you're pretty screwed. You're on your own. Fine. That's what I've come to expect from strangers. Always thinking of themselves. Why don't you just get out of Arafu? I've got a road to watch. Well, I'll consider helping, but help costs caps. Do I look like I just stepped out of Tenpenny Tower? I barely have a pot to piss in. All right, Evan. I'll be glad to help. What do you need? I don't want to take my eyes off the ramp here. There's no telling when the family will return. Can you do me a favor and check on the other people's houses here? You know, make sure they're doing okay? Speak with Davis West, Karen Shenzi, and Ken Ewers. You need help knocking on doors? That's what you need my help with? You couldn't do that yourself, okay. Hey, I have a message for the West family from their daughter. I can't take that. You're just going to have to bring it to the West yourself. Can you tell me more about what's been going on around here? There used to be more families living here. Most of them have dismantled their shacks and moved on to greener pastures. Those that are still living here are keeping themselves indoors, thanks to the family. Where do you think I can find the family? I think they live somewhere east or northeast of here. Problem is, they always travel in the dark, so I can't see exactly where they go. There's all kinds of places they could be hiding, like Hamilton's Hideaway, the old Moonbeam Cinema, or Northwest Seneca Metro Station. All right, I have to go now. Just watch yourself. I've got an itchy trigger finger. With that, he marks three nearby locations on our map, one of which must be the lair for the family. But first, we have to check in with the residents of Arafu. Heading over to the door of the first home on the left. Hello? Is this the mailman? Oh, I do hope my fall catalog has arrived. Huh? What are you talking about? Evan King sent me. Oh, Evan, he's such a gentleman. Please, do come inside. Let me unlock the door for you. Oh, never mind. Oh, all right. Do come back later, though. I'm making cookies. Actually, sure, yeah, I have your fall catalog. Oh, goody. I can hardly wait to browse the latest fashions. Please do come inside. Let me unlock the door for you. Going on in. What the hell are you doing in here? Get the fuck out. Calm down, pal, before I put a hole in your chest. Look, pal, there is no way you're going to get to me or my wife, so just back on out of here. What the hell is your problem? Do you understand English? I said, get out. Look, I'm not here to hurt anyone, I swear. All I care about are two things. My life and my wife's life. Beyond that, I don't give two shits. Your wife let me in. Something about a fall catalog? Oh, for the love of... Look, she's dumber than a bag of hammers, okay? If you want to talk to anyone, you need to talk to me. So what the fuck do you want? Why are you being so hostile? Maybe it's because my wife has gone mental. No, wait. I think it's because some lunatics are trying to kill us. Other than that, no reason. Whoa, 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 take it easy, Ken. Yeah, right. And the second I drop my guard, you pounce. No thanks. Look, speak your piece, then leave. Evan King told me to check in on you. Is everything okay? We're great. Just peachy. I love sitting in my house with my thumb up my ass. Tell Mr. King that sitting here all day isn't going to make us any safer. We need to take action. So what's your take on Evan King? Well, he's town mayor or sheriff or whatever he calls himself. He calls all the shots. 
When he says to get the heck indoors and stay put, we do that. Can you tell me more about what's been going on around here? Everyone is keeping themselves safe from the family. If I was you, I'd do the same. You want to know more? Talk to Evan King. What do you think about the family? They're low-life scum who decided to use Arafu as their own personal amusement park. Oh, they're a fun bunch. I'd take a shot at them if I could, but judging from what they did to the Brahmin, I wouldn't live long to tell about it. All right, I'll be going now. Good. Now get out. It sounds like his wife is a little off. We can still try to have a conversation with her. You must be exhausted from all that walking in this horrible heat. Oh, and hungry too. Sit, please. Braley Ewers is the name. Don't mind my husband, Kenneth. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Evan King told me to check on you. Is everything okay? Oh, he's such a dear. I must remember to make more of those preserves he loves so much. Can you tell me more about what's been going on around here? Oh my, I don't know. Mrs. West is probably whipping up a batch of her famous cookies, and all the kids are playing in the yards. It's so nice outside. The grass looks lovely this time of year. Yes, quite lovely. Um, I've got to go. Oh, certainly. Close the front gate when you leave, and mind my begonia garden. I just planted them. You do know there was a war 200 years ago, right? Well, I must speak to my husband about that. We could bring it up at the next Homeowners Association meeting. Ah, oh, I do love meeting so much. I think I'll bring muffins. Wow, are you bats not insane or what? Well now, there's no cause for name-calling. How rude. I have a pie cooling on the windowsill I must attend to. Good day. Well, these people are physically okay, but mentally I'm not so sure. They live in poverty. There's not much in their home. Turning left and going around a barricade, we find a door to the Shenzi residence. Yes. Who is it? Sorry, my mistake. Great. Thanks for scaring the shit out of me. I'm from the family. Let me in. There's no way I'm letting you wackos in here. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Evan King sent me. Can I come in? Oh, he did? Well, it's about damn time he did something. Come on in. I'll unlock the door. Heading inside. It's nice to see a friendly new face around here. It's been a long time. The name's Karen Shenzi. Evan King told me to check on you. Is everything all right? Scared out of my mind. I'm glad he's checking on us, but until someone nips the problem in the bud, we may as well stay inside forever. So what's your take on Evan King? He's a spineless wimp. His best solution to the family is to stay inside our homes and hide. What does that tell them? It tells them that we can be pushed around whenever they want. I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of King. Can you tell me more about what's been going on around here? We're scared shitless. Evan King's got everyone so worked up about the family, no one wants to set foot outside. That asshole runs the show. But does he really do anything about our problem? No. What do you think about the family? All they do is terrorize us. They taunt us to open our doors, throw bottles at our houses, and scream at us. If I knew King had my back, I'd step outside and show them just how I feel about their visits. Especially after this last attack. All right, I have to go now. Sure. Go. Just like everyone else. Well, someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Though I suppose I can understand why she would be so frustrated. The lawman is just keeping everybody inside. But they really don't have a whole lot of people to defend themselves. So I'm not sure what a better option would be. Heading out, we see a big shack to the right. This one looks larger than the others. That's because this is Mayor Evan King's shack. It's locked with an average lock. And even though it's red, if we were to pick this lock, we would not lose karma. But before we explore it, we can head into the nearby shack, the West Residence. As soon as we enter, we see two bodies lying on the ground. Inspecting the first corpse, we see this is the body of Lucy's father, Davis West. The bodies of the Wests have bite marks on the neck area that go to the bone. The lack of blood stains on the sheets is strange, as any bite or wound of that depth should have caused massive bleeding. The bite marks on the neck appear to be from a human, or humans with sharpened incisors or canines. Oh no. 
Don't tell me we're dealing with even more cannibals. We see Lucy's mother Matilda lying on the bed. These corpses look unlike any other corpses we find in the game. They almost look drained, like a prune or a raisin. Their home is in complete disarray, bottles and trash all over. And then we discover who is responsible. On the wall, painted in blood, is the family. So the family has graduated beyond killing Brahman. They killed the Wests. But where's Lucy's brother, Ian? We don't see his body anywhere. Well, we have some horrible news to report. Heading on over to Evan King. What did they tell you? Everyone okay? Did you know the Wests are dead? The family must have gotten to them in the last attack. Sons of bitches. Damn it! If only we had more men, we could stand up to them. I'm sick of them terrorizing this town. Wait a minute. When you searched the West's place, did you find their son Ian's body? He has the same response to two of these options. If we say, nope, and it's unlikely they left him alive, or no, and enough with the third degree, he says, Sorry. Sorry, I just don't know what to do. The West's lives were my responsibility, and look what happened. Or we can say, no, I only found the parents' bodies. This has to be the work of the family. I've caught that weirdo leader of theirs talking to Ian down by the river. Look, I know I've asked a lot of you already, but you have to find that kid. He deserves better than all this. I discovered that the Wests had bite marks on their necks made by humans. What? The family must be a pack of cannibals. Oh, this is all I needed right now. What am I going to do? They'll keep coming back until all of us are dead if they think we're food. Don't worry, Evan. I'll figure out what happened to the Wests. Thanks, kid. You're all right. I'll be on my way. Next time I see the family, there's going to be hell to pay. If our lockpicking is poor, we can always pickpocket a key to Evan's house. But if we do, we lose karma. Heading on inside, we find the repair bobblehead sitting on his dinner table. The inscription on the base reads, Why go down with the ship when you can try to fix it? Our repair has been permanently increased by 10. Aside from the bobblehead, there isn't much in his house, so we can head on out, and now we have some very sad news to deliver to Lucy. Heading back to Megaton, we find her where we left her, in Moriarty's saloon. I really appreciate you doing this for me. I'm feeling better already. Lucy, I have bad news. Your parents are dead. What? No. Oh my god. I should never have left. I knew it. Now they're all dead. Oh, wait a second. What about my brother? I didn't find his body. Then maybe he's still alive. Lucy, he's probably dead too. No. I refuse to believe that. Well, there's no sign of him, but I'm sure he's alive. You must find him. Please. He's all I have left in this world now. I just gotta know if he's alive or dead. It can't just end this way. Sorry, I agreed to go to Arafu. That's it. Fine. Be an asshole. I don't care. If you find Ian, and you have a change of heart, come back here and tell me. If not, fine. Screw you. Well, if you want me to find Ian, I'll need to equip myself, and that costs money. That's all I have in the world, I told you! All right, Lucy, calm down. I'll find your brother, Ian. I'm sorry. You don't even know me. And you've already helped this much. I'm not stupid. I know he's probably dead. I just need to know for sure. I'll be going now. Please, do what you can to find my brother. Poor Lucy. Now, Evan marked three points on our map that we can go explore to try and find the family. Many of these locations are interesting in their own right and deserve a dedicated video, so I can't go through all of them here. However, near to Arafu, we find some Meyer Lurks guarding a Nuka-Cola Quantum, which is perched atop a pole sticking out of the middle of the water. It sits on top of two tin cans. To find the family, we go to the most northern point of interest that Evan marked on our map, Northwest Seneca Station. We see an escalator going down to the metro station, 
But just outside there is an interesting interior cell. We find an abandoned grocery store called Cornucopia Fresh. Inside we find a lot of junk and refuse sitting around. Feels a lot like the Super Duper Mart, and the place is infested with rad roaches. Notably, we find some mint hats on a countertop, a first aid kit on the wall, and a floor safe. The terminal doesn't have any lore, it just allows us to unlock the floor safe. Inside, we just find a small stash of caps. We do find a flashing neon Nuka Cola sign in the corner. The only other one I found was inside the Statesman Hotel. It's a nifty little set piece, but that's everything. However, if we head outside, we get attacked by either the Talon Company or the Regulators, depending on our karma. Once we defend ourselves, we can head on down into the metro station. Heading down the ramp, we could continue to the left, or we can turn right to go explore the restrooms. Inside, we find a skeleton holding some Psycho, and we get attacked by some mole rats. Where? There you are. After the mole rats are dead, we can explore this room. Heading into the men's room, we find a stash of fragmentation grenades in one of the sinks, next to a first aid kit on the wall, and in the water tank of one of the toilets, we find a knife right next to a large scorched book. Seems like an odd assortment of items to have there. Heading on over to the women's restroom, we find a teddy bear in one of the tanks. We can go ahead and snag this to give to Marie back in Pittsburgh and a first aid kit on the wall. That's it for the bathroom though, so heading on out, we can continue along where we find a dead wastelander. Is this evidence that we're headed the right way? Going through the turnstiles, we see that the metro station is blocked off with rubble, but we do find a door. Just as we're about to open it, it opens for us. You're not... not here to try and steal my secrets, are you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm here for everything you got. Hand it over, zombie. No, no way. You're not taking the formula from me. Opening fire. In which case, Murphy and his bodyguard Barrett turn hostile. But we've just killed these two ghouls without getting any answers. Is this the family? Reloading a previous save, we can actually talk to these ghouls. Instead of saying that we're here for his secrets, we can ask him what his secrets are. What secrets, Murphy? The secret of making Ultra Jet, obviously. Oh, damn it. Now the cat's out of the bag. Typical me. Oh. Well, no, I'm not here to steal your secrets. Good. I was afraid I was going to have to abandon my lab here. That would mean starting all over again. It's not easy trying to make Ultra Jet, you know. We have another option to attack and kill him by choosing the bottom one, or we can learn more about Ultra Jet by saying, What the heck are you talking about? You've never heard of it? Ultra Jet is almost double the potency of Jet. Perfect for ghouls. Jet barely affects us, you see. Ultra Jet, huh? Is that some sort of super chem? I suppose you could say that. Only trouble is, it's almost impossible to gather the ingredients together. Say, you might be able to help me with that. We can take an anti-chem approach and say, No way, I'm not helping you make chems. Fine, fine, sheesh. Take it easy. You change your mind, give me a shout. Or we can say, nothing's free in this world, Murphy. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't think you were a freaking charity. It takes three things to make Ultra Jet. Two of the ingredients I got plenty of. The other one is a little harder to find. Sugar bombs. For every box of sugar bombs you bring me, I'll pay you 15 caps. So you in? Hmm, let me think about it. What is it with you people? Stop thinking so much. That's what got us all here in the first place. Is he suggesting that thinking too much led to the apocalypse of 2077? Seems like a strange statement. At this point, we can walk away, agree to do it, or pass a speech check to bump that number up to 30. Make it 30 caps each and you got yourself a deal. Fine, anything to get what I need. Now scram, I got some preparing to do. Now we have another place to turn in stuff for caps, which is pretty great, but these guys don't appear to be Brahmin killers to me, and they certainly don't appear to be murderers. Have we gone to the wrong spot? Did we get turned around somewhere? 
While exploring his little shack, we see a lot of stuff set to owned. He's got a big pile of Abraxo cleaner on a table back there. It's disturbing to note that that must be one of the ingredients to his Ultra Jet. If we pick a footlocker next to his desk, we find nothing. It's completely empty. There's some ammo containers in his bedroom. And then heading into a nearby room, we open a door to find the entrance to a sewer. Manhole to Moresti's service tunnel. Ah, maybe we have to travel further to find the lair of the family. Heading down the manhole leads to a darkened cave where we find the rotting corpse of a Brahmin. Aha! We are close. We'll completely explore these caves and find the family in our next episode. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week, and we will continue with this short series on the family in the next few days. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a new shirt in the shop, folks. Thanks, killer. That's right, it's Pikmin, everyone's favorite psychopath from Fallout 4. On the front of the shirt, we've got his handwritten note, and on the back of the shirt, we see Pikmin himself painting one of his masterpieces. You can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more importantly, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.